Yes, you read it right. The Evo Pro is a bit of a Pandora's box in its current form. And in order to understand why I said that, we need to rewind a little. <laughs> Anyways, uh, in the last video, I compared this to the Aries Platinum to highlight how different manufacturers prioritize different things when designing a wheelbase. And the takeaway was simple. Both are excellent bases in their own way and cater to different driving styles. After that, I moved on to my next project, the Acetec La Prima. While working on a video about the Acetec La Prima, because a recent firmware transformed it, which I'll upload in a few days and we'll talk all about it, I accidentally broke my Bathurst lap record in Automobilista 2, which was set previously with Evo Pro. Not only that, I realized that I was far more consistent with my lap times and, well, that was enough reason for me to run more step tests. This was my profile for the following test. This graph shows La Prima's response with zero filters and lowest slew rate of 0.1 Nm per millisecond. The average velocity is roughly 10 to 18 radians per second for most of the active session, with occasional bumps in average velocity line up to 20 to 22 radians per second, which is evidently on the slower side because slew rate restricts the movements. But even so, the deviation band is quite wide indicating that the motor is still picking up on the finer details and is trying to react to it due to its inherent nature. The slew rate is enforcing a ceiling, but it does not change the motor's behavior. Or, in simpler terms, the sensitivity to small input and surface changes remain high despite lower slew rate. Now here is the profile that I use for Automobilista 2. It's basically max slew rate and frequency and everything else at zero. It feels amazing and isn't harsh at all. In this graph, you will notice that with the slew rate maxed out at 4 Nm per millisecond, now the average velocity curve shows significantly higher values, consistently reaching and stabilizing around 40 to 55 radians per second. The standard deviation band shows higher values as well. Combining both of the graphs, you can see the massive role slew rate plays. Increasing the slew rate transforms the La Prima from a calm, detail-rich but gentle puppy into a highly dynamic, rapid response system monster. The sensitivity to detail is always there. See these deviations. The difference is how quickly and forcefully the motor can act on those cues. And you may notice that this average velocity is quite good. In my last video, I said that the Evo Pro was the fastest base I had ever tested. So to satisfy my curiosity, I ran more step tests to see which has a higher peak and average velocity. This is the profile that I use for Automobilista 2. 10% damping, 15% friction, zero inertia, 45 wheel return speed, and 100 slew rate. 100 translates to lowest possible slew rate, according to Simpro, because when I slide it all the way to zero, it says no limits, indicating at zero you are running at maximum slew rate. In my profile, I'm running lowest slew rate because the responsiveness was a lot for me to handle. Here's a graph based on my profile. In this profile, you can see that the Evo Pro's raw power and agility are a bit restrained. The average velocity is limited. The deviation band isn't too wide either, but the oscillations are still present. Now, just to be clear, when I say oscillations, I don't mean wheel oscillations. Those are a separate thing. Okay, don't get confused here. In here, I mean frequency oscillation in the motor's control algorithm caused by the motor overshooting its target and then correcting itself back repeatedly. Now, I understand that is how a wheelbase works, but the oscillations are a separate issue. If you want to learn how a wheelbase works, check out this video. Uh, so, okay. Let's say this right here is the target value. And based on the torque command, the motor proceeds to reach it. But you see it overshoots it. So now the control algorithm comes into play and quickly corrects it. But when coming back down, it overshoots itself again. And this process keeps on repeating itself over and over and over again. Hence the oscillations or ringing. And I wanted to see if all of this could be eliminated entirely with the help of filters. So I maxed out friction, damper and inertia and ran the step test 10 times. Oscillations still do not go away. Weirdly, it does not matter what profile you're using or how much filters you're applying, the oscillations or ringing are still going to be a part of it. The motor is still continuously overshooting and correcting itself with all of these filters. Based on all of that, I realized that either something is wrong with the control algorithm or the firmware. 
But in any case, now that you have seen the basis behavior based on my profile and with everything maxed out, it should help clear any and all of the doubts you may be having. I understand that last time I did not show all of this data but still posted my testing methodology when Will from Boosted Media asked about it. I take full responsibility for it and I should have included the data from my profiles as well. But in any chance, if you're still having doubts or queries and want to talk about something regarding all of this testing and methodologies, reach out to me on my Discord server or the comment section. Next up, I removed all the filters, maxed out the wheel return speed and the slew rate. Pay attention here, max slew rate means zero or no limits. Now you can see that the deviations are much more wider than before, meaning the wheelbase is rapidly oscillating to all the details. It is also averaging a slightly higher velocity, but again, the oscillations are a part of it. In the next one, I simply dialed down the slew rate all the way and combined both graphs. Now what is odd here is that slew rate has very little effect on the velocity. And what's interesting is that on paper, the slew rate slider should be the governor for the torque ramp speed. But this data shows that the peak and average velocity is more or less the same between minimum and maximum slew rate setting. Only the response time changes. In physics terms, a true slew rate slider caps acceleration, which in a short test like that, also caps the velocity you can reach. And that is exactly what we saw in Asetek's case. But SimMagic's case is a bit different. Ryan! Why are you different? I want to love you. Please be good. This strongly suggests that the slew rate control is not implemented as a true limiter in the torque command path. Or perhaps there is a hidden torque or current or inertia ceiling that is being hit before the slew rate limiter can do its job. Asetek's behavior is real and directly tied to physics. There is a clear and distinct difference between minimum and maximum slew rate. This behavior is textbook slew rate behavior. SimMagic's slew rate slider is more like a response aggressiveness knob and it seems like Evo Pro has another hidden limit that caps its speed. Now the most surprising part was that Acertec Leprima had higher peak and average velocity compared to Evo Pro. <laughs> what? Slew rate once again plays a big role here. And you can see how SimMagic reacts quickly and more abruptly. Acertec responds more gradually. This is the reason why I'm able to play comfortably on Acertec, despite it having higher peak and average velocity. I know response time matters, but the way the torque is delivered matters equally. Even at zero filters, La Prima retains a much smoother curve. In order to change this abrupt behavior of SimMagic, you need to play with slew rate slider. But the ringing or oscillation makes the experience less consistent or unpredictable at times. Ideally, you want the torque ramp up and ramp down to be as smooth and as predictable as possible. Too harsh and it quickly becomes less fun. Now, in my last video, I said that Evo Pro's responsiveness, responsiveness was too much for me to handle. If you got that mixed up with the amount of velocity it reaches, then maybe you didn't fully understand the video. Evo Pro's velocity has nothing to do with the fact that I was unable to cope up with it. I said that it was tuned for responsiveness, not higher velocity. Acertec has a higher peak and average velocity than Evo Pro. And I have no issues with that. My issue was with the abrupt changes that Evo Pro brought to the table. And no amount of tuning or adding filters made that experience better. I was unable to get consistent lap times. The point of retesting Evo and comparing it to La Prima was to try to get some answers. Answers which continue to elude me. So in the pursuit of those answers, I did some slew rate testing. Once again, here are the profiles used for this test. And no, you cannot use your desired profile for this testing. Slew rate testing needs to be filterless because any sort of filter such as friction, damper or inertia will artificially slow the motor down, which also alters how quickly the torque can change, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of doing it. Now, ideally, this test is done at 90 to 180 degrees. I went a step further and did it at 360, 540 and 900 degrees of rotation because real world usage. I ran the test five times on each base, then used Python to get some answers based on the CSV files. Evo Pro at 360 degrees got a peak slew rate of 3147.63 or 3.147 newton meters per millisecond. 
with an average slew rate of 2.68 newton meters per millisecond at 540 degrees it got a peak slew rate of 2683.84 or 2.683 newton meters per millisecond with an average slew rate of 2.5 newton meters per millisecond at 900 degrees it got a peak slew rate of 2782.33 or 2.792 newton meters per millisecond with an average slew rate of 2.7 newton meters per millisecond now keep in mind that sim magic never revealed the true slew rate figures but asetec has and for laprima it is 4 newton meters per millisecond laprima at 360 degrees got a peak slew rate of 3453.15 or 3.453 newton meters per millisecond with an average slew rate of 3 newton meters per millisecond at 540 degrees it got a peak slew rate of 3103.69 or 3.1 newton meters per millisecond with an average slew rate of 2.9 newton meters per millisecond at 900 degrees it got a peak slew rate of 4212.64 or 4.2 newton meters per millisecond with an average slew rate of 3.7 newton meters per millisecond here's a final look at the data feel free to pause it here to take a proper look doing all of this testing pulled me further away from any sort of answer that i was hoping to get and the worst part is it complicated all of the things even more eh but um there is this other topic that i want to touch on some people not sim magic i repeat not sim magic okay some people claimed that its slew rate is higher than simicube 2 pros which has a maximum slew rate of 8 newton meters per millisecond what how did you get that there's a video floating on the internet and some magic's discord server claiming this very thing and if you have been parroting that let me break it to you that video is a master class in how not to test hardware if you have built your entire understanding of a wheel basis performance based on that which by the way has zero context no documented settings no proof of methodology no graph no chart no number no nothing then you have essentially based your opinion on a simple video that is dressing up as data that is not analysis just because the wheel moved a millisecond quicker on sim magic does not make it better than simicube it simply means that sim magic has a lighter rotor with less rotational inertia such form of videos prove absolutely nothing not only these tests are useless but they are actively misleading If you are serious about the truth you rely on measured data not random fluff floating around the internet In my tests you saw that Evo Pro could not surpass La Prima La Prima not even Forte or Invicta La Prima How on earth can it surpass Simicube 2 Pro How By the way on a completely separate note I would love to have the Simicube 2 Pro tested but I don't have it if you are someone who has one or has Simicube's contact details please reach out to me I would love to do that Now just to be clear I am not saying that Evo Pro is a bad base I am not jumping to conclusions based on slew rate and velocity no it is still an excellent base irrespective of all of that data and it is tuned for responsiveness It's just that some things don't really make sense and it could use a refined control algorithm or firmware updates. At the end of the day, before crowning any base a winner, we must ask ourselves, whatever we have heard are those facts or just hype? That's been it. I've been the Napman and may the downforce be with you.